let your hearts be open to the Lord. A pure heart, a sanctified heart, a holy heart. That's what the Lord wants. I come before you today. That's just one thing that I want to say. Close in my heart, sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflow. Joy overflows in my heart.
chosen generation Come for to show His excellence All I require for life God has given me I know who I am Everybody say We are the chosen generation We are a chosen generation, come for to show his righteousness. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm high. I know who I am.
across the globe are echoing the assuredness in the efficacy and power of the Almighty God through the God's chosen vessel, Dr. W.F. Kumuyi. No matter what your condition is, mercy is coming to you. The rings and meeting slabs are strong enough to accommodate and remove the suffering, devastation, sickness, poverty, and clogs of sin from the life of whosoever will. If you say, I want forgiveness, he will not say no, because already is the merciful God. This stable, known as the Global Crusade with Kumui, GCK, is pitching a gospel tabernacle for a divine encounter in an African country known for scenic sight, Zambia. There are certain rooms you need to be in at certain times to have certain encounters. The door of Zambia is open to divine encounter with the God of all miracles. Starting from Thursday 21st to Tuesday 26th September 2023 at 1600 RGMT daily taking place at the National Hero Stadium, Zambia. Miracle will launch at your doorstep. Ministers, church workers, and professionals will be shown exceeding limits in the ministry on 22nd, 25th, and 26th September at Molongoshi International Conference Center, Zambia, at 0600 R GMT. Teenagers, campus students, core members, and young adults will be treated to an eye-opening encounter to awaken the sleeping giants in them at the National Heroes Stadium, Zambia, on Saturday, 23rd, September, 2023, at 0600R GMT. The program shall be transmitted live on satellite, radio, and television. And all those who are online, I want to tell you that the miracle power will come from the Alpha location here and get to you right there. The September edition will feature inspirational song from choirs across the globe while the guest music minister Jonathan Lee will lead worship and praise to the almighty God. It is a moment of divine encounter. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Put your hands together. That was a miracle, miraculous kind of, you know, the power of God in our life for the child to stop that situation. Your own situation also bringing shame to you and reproach has come to an end tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. My name is Jibri Mercy. I want to testify of what God has done in my life. I thank God that I am not a victim of a spitzel. I have a problem in my eyes that whenever I look into direct light, my left eye, water will be gushing out of it. I told my proprietress, she said I should tell my parents that they should buy me glasses. I said, God forbid. I was now saying this in my mind that how can a small girl of me using glasses that is not a sin of pride the following day when Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi said we should place our hand on where we have the problem. I placed my hand on my left eyes believing that God will heal me. But I thank God God healed me, and since then, I can face the red light, and nothing will happen to me. My second testimony, since when I'm seven years, the one I can remember, if I take anything cold, I will not be able to swallow even saliva. My parents usually spend money on this. They will buy drugs. This, this, this sickness usually keeps me from school, even more than two weeks. The HM already know about my issue. But I thank God. God healed me. At first, I placed my hand on my throat. I did not have any testimony. 
But when Baba now said that, if you want to give your life to Christ, raise up your hand. I raise up my hand. And after the prayer, the final prayer and the final amen, I thank God that I was able to swallow my saliva freely without any, any pain. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together as you surrender your life to the Lord. Every blockage will be removed in your life, in your throat, in every area of your life. Praise the Lord. Um, my name is Paul Ubi. I was invited to this program by a friend of mine. I school in Ekiti. And I've, I've been battling with this addiction of smoking weed and cigarettes for a while. And since I left secondary school, I've been smoking. That was in 2014. I can't remember the last time I didn't smoke up to now. And funny enough, I developed this polynasa in my left, right nose, nostrils, whereby I can't breathe properly. And I was told that I would be having an operation next month for it. And when the pastor was praying, I was telling God that God, I, I think I'm done with this weed of a team. Because the pastor said something that if you, if the devil gives you something, he wants to turn your head upside down and your leg would be upstairs and um, doing the wiggling and stuff. So I thought like all these years I've been smoking, it's as if um, I've not been thinking well and it's as if what the pastor said is true. Then I beg God that God, because when I came here, I have these lumps in my nose. I don't even need to put my hand in my nose. I would feel it myself. And unfortunately, when the pastor said we should touch our hands on wherever the part that we feel is not okay with us, I was reluctant at first, but I just decided to just, like, st with style, I placed my hand on my nose. Then after the pastor prayed finished, I sat down and I blew my nose. I, I can't find, like, I can't find it there again. Like, there's no more there. And I think that's a miracle for me. Thank you very much. Put your hands together. Double miracle. Deliverance from smoking and healing of the nose block. Double portion for you tonight. Tell yourself, double portion in my life. Double miracle in my life. That's an affirmation from heaven for you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I'm Sister Priscilla, Priscilla Imakbo. I'm a student of FOE. I want to thank God for how he delivered me and how he healed me miraculously. I've been having a sickness for, um, since 2020 and I couldn't say anything because of financial issues. But miraculously, this, I told him 2022, 2021 December, during the miracle um, explosion in the DLCC, I told him that, God, I don't want to carry the sickness to 2023, that I should just do something for me. Miraculously, 2022, God just made the miracle, miraculous provision and I could do the surgery. After the surgery, I had issues, like I couldn't eat, I had post-surgery um, uh, trauma and my body was just disorganized. But that day, I sat at home, because it was around August 27 I did the surgery. And it was during the time we were having the global crusade. So during that time, I listened to the prayer at home, and miraculously, God healed me. Today, I am totally healed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can do better than that. Say, praise the Lord. Can we have orchestra to praise the Lord with us? Before we...
Tout le monde, gloire à Dieu. Ce soir, les vies gâchées seront transformées. Le Seigneur va te toucher ce soir, te guérir ce soir, te sauver ce soir. Tu repartiras à la maison avec la joie, l'enthousiasme, le bonheur dans ta vie au nom de Jésus. Père, nous te remercions pour ton amour. Merci parce que nous savons que tu es là. Tu n'as pas changé. Tu as dit je suis Dieu et je ne change pas. Seigneur Jésus, qui sauve les âmes, qui guérit les malades, qui délivre les opprimés, tu es le même hier, aujourd'hui, éternellement. Et nous demandons, Seigneur, touche chaque vie, transforme chaque vie, sauve chacun au nom de Jésus. Guéris les malades ce soir et accomplis des prodiges chaque vie. Merci Seigneur parce que nous savons que tu as exaucé. Au nom de Jésus, nous prions. Un autre. Amen. Put your hand together. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Somebody there, he said, Praise the Lord. We well, thank the Lord who has brought us together as an end time army. Oh, you are welcome, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. Tonight, wasted lives will turn around. The Lord will touch you tonight, heal you tonight, save you tonight. You go back home with joy, excitement, happiness in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you because we know you are here. You have not changed. You said, I am God, I change not. Lord Jesus, saving souls, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we are asking tonight, touch every life. Transform every life. Save everyone in Jesus' name. Heal the sick here tonight and perform wonders in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Another Alpha location, amen. You've got it, you'll not miss your blessing. In Jesus' name, God bless you. You can see that I told you yesterday that I'm picking the letters of the word miracle, M. The miracle of mercy. I, that's for today. Then there'll be R, there'll be A, C, L, and E. And before we finish everything, miracle will land on you right there. Tonight, we're looking at the I, Jesus, the impartial intercessor for every individual. He intercedes for everyone. He prays for everyone. He turns our lives, wasted lives. What do I mean by that? The wicked life. The wicked life is a wasted life. And as somebody continues in wickedness, wickedness every day, wickedness in the private, and wickedness in the public is wasting its life. But Christ has come today. It will turn that wicked life. It will turn you around in Jesus' name. 
wasted life in there in the afflicted affliction life the people who are afflicted the affliction does not allow them to move on and to move forward and they also they afflict other people eventually that afflicted life eventually that affliction life is wasted is wasted in a life that has no purpose is not doing anything for himself is not going in any positive direction all he can do afflict 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 others and he also is afflicted wasted life as there is a sinful life the one that gives himself is like his total devotion is to be sinful his total errand in life is to be sinful that sinful life that evil life that life that is devoted to sin, 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 Satan afflicts that life and waste that life. I pray your life will not be wasted in sin. Tell me, Amen. The tea there is a terrible life, terrible life. Everybody avoids sin, it's Mr. Terrible. It's Mrs. Terrible. And everybody fears him. He cannot do anything substantial, anything successful, because his life is a terrorizing life. His life is a terrible life. May God deliver everyone and you turn around today in Jesus' name. That he is the evil life. He, a evil, is next door to devil. If you put a deed there, it becomes devil. And the evil life, it does evil. It thinks evil. It plans evil. It strategizes evil. All he can think about, he cannot think of the goodness of God. He cannot think of the glory of God. He cannot think of the grace of God. All he thinks about is doing evil and thinking evil. The life is wasted. Deep there is a defiled life. Defiled life. She is available. He is available for anyone that wants to defile him or defile her. He says, I'm a candidate for defilement. Do you want to defile? Come. And the life is wasted in defilement. But today, we come so that it will take that wasted life, it will turn your life around. If you will give yourself tonight totally, completely unto the Lord, a change has come. Give me a good amen. amen. A transformation has come, and that wasted life will become a profitable life. I'm talking about your life. It will become a positive life. It will become a practical life. And tonight is that night that God will turn your wasted life into a good life, wonderful life. My life will be wonderful from tonight. Let the heavens hear you. Tonight is done by the intercession of Christ Jesus, the impartial intercessor for every individual. I'm coming to Isaiah chapter 53, and I'm reading from verse 12. Isaiah. Chapter 53, reading from verse 12. Therefore, will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has purged out his soul into death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, because he came to stand for us. He came to make a substitution for us. He was counted as if he was a sinner. Our sin laid upon him, and he bare the sin of many. Look at this. I made intercession, made intercession for 
transgressors. He made intercession for the wicked. He made intercession for the afflicted. He made intercession for the, for the sick and for the sinful. He made intercession for those who are evil. He made intercession for those who are defiled and destroyed and damned so that their lives will turn around. And tonight, he has made intercession for you. He has made intercession for me intercession he has impartial intercession for every individual we're looking at hebrews chapter 7 and i'm looking at verse 25 in verse 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He made right now his living on high, at the right hand of majesty on high, and he's praying for you. He wants the best for you. He wants your life to turn around. He doesn't want you to waste your life waste your mind he doesn't want you to waste your resources he doesn't want you to waste everything you've got in a life that is sinful a life that is not productive a life that is not forward looking a life that is not having the lifting power and force of heaven in your life because he live it today is ever alive the same yesterday today and forever he ever live it to make intercession prayer demand for them as i told you we're looking at jesus once again the miracle worker how does he work the miracle by the intercession intervention that he has for everyone. Jesus, the impartial intercessor for every individual. Three things we're looking at. Number one, precious imputation for the injurious in iniquity. We think about Saul and we think about sinners like Saul's previous life that he was injurious injurious in iniquity and yet the lord imputed unto him when he repented when he turned around imputed unto him his own righteousness precious imputation for the injurious in iniquity number two is prevailing intercession for invalids in infirmity invalids those who find impossibilities in their lives they are invalid they are impotent they are powerless they know not how to rise and move in the forward direction invalid impotent with their infirmity and today the lord who has made intercession for you will turn your life around that powerless life will become powerful i thought you'll say amen and that impotent life will become potent, mighty. Your life is not going to remain as it is right now. Something different, something greater, something higher. The Lord will put in your life in Jesus' name. Well, if you are satisfied with the impotent life, if you are satisfied with the useless life, if you are satisfied with the worthless life, well, since that's what you want, then you remain like that. But if you are not satisfied, if you say from today, Christ Jesus, the intercessor, 
praying for me is going to make my life higher and better and greater. He will do it tonight. Number three is the powerful intervention for individuals with impossibility. You see, everybody has impossibility. The one who is a total sinner, he has impossibility in his life. Even those who are saved, those who are born again, those who are children of God, they might have sickness that they count impossible. They might have satanic oppression, they find impossible. But the impossibility of your life is becoming possible tonight. That sickness is going. That oppression is finished tonight in Jesus' name. Powerful intervention for individuals with impossibility. Let's look at number one there. Number one. Number one, we're looking at precious imputation for injurious, the injurious in iniquity all, all, all the time. Wherever there is iniquity, there will be injury. Wherever there is transgression, there will be injury. Whenever there is sin, there will be injury. When somebody commits sin, you injure somebody somewhere. Look at all the sins that people commit. Anytime anybody has iniquity, it carries injury for other people in his life. We're looking at Romans chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 22. It says, therefore, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. His faith, faith in the Lord. His belief, believing in the Lord was imputed unto him, was counted unto him for righteousness. Verse 23, verse 23 says, now it was not reaching for his sake alone. It was not reaching for Abraham alone, but to all the sons of Abraham, all the people that will become friends of Christ as Abraham became the friend of God. And they turn from their sin, and they turn from their evil, and they call upon the Lord, and they want the mighty hand of God to bring the change in their lives. All those people, they turn to the Lord and they believe on the Lord and that faith, that faith, that faith in Christ is imputed unto them for righteousness. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, but for us also, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. As you come today and you say, I believe he is my savior. I believe he is my substitute. He bore my sin. He took my sin away, and I lay all those sins upon him, that act of faith. Forsaking all your sins, trusting him will be counted unto you as if you never sinned in your life. All the past sins will be forgiven. Everything will be taken away because you believe on him that raised up Jesus your Lord. You make him your Lord. It's not just Jesus is Savior. It's my Savior. It's not Jesus the Lord alone for the angels and men. It becomes your Lord. You come under his control. You come under his authority. You come under his favor. Because it becomes your Lord and the Father raised him from the dead. In verse 25, verse 25, who was delivered for our offenses. When you understand that Christ, the Savior, who died 
on a cross of Calvary that he was delivered to that judgment. He was delivered to that punishment because actually he was bearing your sin. And he bears your sin to carry them away. He was raised again for our justification. Then he justifies you just as if you had never seen. He forgives you and he looks at you with the favor of heaven as if you had never seen that the imputation for the people who had been in iniquity, who carried injury with them everywhere. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading there from verse 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. To which that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, reconciling the sinful world. The sinful world has been separated from the holy God of heaven. Holiness and sin cannot get together. Holiness and sin never get married. Yoke together, lean together, abide together. God is holy. His holiness is pure, purer than gold and whiter than snow. And man is sinful, defiled, doomed, and damned. And the sinful man cannot be in good terms with the holy God. But Christ came. Christ came representing the holiness of God. Christ came bearing the sin of sinful man. And then through Christ in Christ, God now reconciles the sinful world unto himself. When we say sinful world, that's talking about you. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because you had sinned, you bear the doom and the damnation of the Almighty God, the anger, the indignation, the wrath of the Almighty God. But God still wants to have mercy on you. And so he sent Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ would live the life, a pure life, a holy life, a spotless life, a sinless life. And because he lived that spotless, sinless life, he was qualified to now pay your debt and to represent you and to have the goodness of God, the grace of God, the salvation of God coming to you. God was in Christ, reconciling the sinful world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. The yoke you should have carried, not imputing that unto you. And the load of judgment, of punishment that you should have borne, not imputing that unto you the trespasses and the sins and the evil you have done because of Christ the spotless one the sinless one and the holy one and the heavenly one coming to bear your sin and you put your faith in him and you put your confidence in him and you put your trust in him that he bore my sin he took away my sin then all your trespasses and all the consequence of your trespasses will not be imputed unto you anymore and he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation in verse 20 in verse 20 it says now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us by the preachers we pray you in Christ's head 
be ye reconciled unto God. Be ye reconciled unto God. You have been turning your back against God. Your sinful life, your sinful character, your sinful habit turned your back against the Lord. Now that you realize that Jesus bore your punishment, he bore your shame, he bore your suffering, and every suffering you should have had all through eternity in hell fire Christ bore everything then you think if Christ has borne that for me if Christ has suffered that for me I turn around and I'm reconciled unto God and it takes my guilt away it takes my condemnation away it takes all the judgment of eternity it takes that away from me you are reconciled unto God I pray it will happen today for you Amen. I said it will happen today for you Amen. but you know God has done everything he ought to do for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life God has done everything he ought to do for your salvation Christ has done everything he ought to do for your salvation he said it is Finish. It's now in your hand to decide. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I've decided to be reconciled with God through Jesus Christ. No turning back. No turning back. I've decided to forsake Satan. I've decided to forsake idolatry. I've decided to forsake all my transgression, all my iniquity. No turning back. No turning back. I've decided to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to change my mind today in a definite way I take Jesus as my Lord and Savior and then you are reconciled to God and there's that precious imputation of the righteousness of Christ upon you and you'll not be injurious anymore you'll not have iniquity anymore because you have turned unto the Lord Acts chapter 3 and I'm reading from verse 19 Acts chapter 3 we're looking at verse 19 repent ye therefore therefore because of what Christ has done repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when you come to the Lord when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ all the sins you ever committed they're blotted out they're wiped out there's a melting a kind of melting in heaven that drops off that clears up that washes up all the sins you ever committed when you repent and when you say I will not go that direction anymore I will not do that evil thing anymore that thing can land somebody in the eternal lake of fire suffering in hell forever and ever I will not continue the life of iniquity the life of transgression the life of evil anymore and then your sins are blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of Jesus sent him to bless you what kind of blessing in turning away every one of you from his iniquities we're looking at number two here number two is the prevailing intercession for invalids in infirmity prevailing intercession intercession means that he prays for you 
He prayed in the past, he's praying in the present, and he's praying that the sinner will be converted to a child of God, a son of God. Number one, he prays for the sinner. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They do not understand, they do not know that their sin will drag them into judgment, into suffering forever and ever. You see, is it not a little thing? Yes, a little thing like what Eve and Adam too can eat, contrary to the commandment of the Lord. A little thing like what he can took and then he died prematurely and went to the and went to the other side. A little sin like Ananias and Sapphira that told that little lie and they still brought some money to present to the apostles and yet they died in their sin. But it is the reason why the Lord is making intercession for everyone. And it's a prevailing intercession for invalids. Invalids are people who are kind of delayed there, detained there. They cannot walk on their own. They cannot rise on their own. They cannot do anything on their own. Sinners are like that. They cannot change their sports. They cannot change their character. They cannot change their behavior. But there is one that can make that change for them and turn them around and transform their lives. He is the one that has prevailing intercession now he prays for sinners to become the sons of god he also prays for the sons of god this already in the family of god he prays for their sanctification he said sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth and when that sanctification Hatch holiness when it comes to you holiness becomes enjoyable holiness becomes desirable holiness becomes something you delight in all the time he prayed for sinners he prayed for saved souls for the sanctified he prayed for the sick he made intercession for the sick and if you are sick is making intercession for you that sickness will not continue in your life in Jesus name somebody say amen Isaiah chapter 53 and I'm reading from verse 6 Isaiah chapter 53 we're looking at verse 8 all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all you see all your sin all your iniquity has been laid on him on Christ and now because he knows that he died for you your sins were laid on him that's why he's making intercession for you that your sins will be forgiven that you will be saved that your life will be turned around look at verse 12 in verse 12 he tells us therefore when I divide him a portion of the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death. That means he died for every one of us. He was numbered with the transgressors. He was treated like a sinner, like a transgressor because he was standing in for you for you for you so that as you come to him 
he looks at your face and recognizes your face and said yes i bought that for you i suffered that for you i took that for you and now the the time you link up with him and you believe in him then the salvation he purchased for you holding for you he gives that to you because we're told an image intercession for the transgressors image intercession for the transgressors it tells us in romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 we're looking at verse 26 likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we shall pray for as we ought we know not what we should pray for as we all there are people that say they're prayer prayer giants they pray what are they praying for oh lord give me land that land will not take you to heaven oh lord give me money make me rich those riches will not take you to heaven oh lord give me success that success will not take you to heaven the number one thing to pray for that many people do not know about is our salvation forgive my sin take my guilt away take my condemnation away remove my name from the book of the lost and bring my name into the book of life and let your nature now dwell in me we know not what we shall pray for we pray for things that are temporary we pray for things that will not not get us out of judgment out of damnation and bring us of God us into the kingdom of God and Jesus says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these other things will be added unto you we know not what we shall pray for as we ought but the spirit maketh intercession for us the spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered uh, that is he grows for us he prays for us in agony that we will realize what our needs are eternal life what our needs are a life that is free from sin what our needs are the power of the lord to take our lives and turn that life in the right direction uh, look at uh, verse uh, uh, 34 there in verse 27 it says in verse 27 and he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints look at that he makes intercession for sinners he now maketh intercession for saints you're born again already and here you are at the crusade there is intercession also for you he says this one i pray not for the world but i pray for the ones that you have given me sanctify them purify them make them holy change their heart take away the stony heart and give them the heart of flesh now if you don't pray for that it means you are saying the holy spirit was doing something unnecessary something unneedful because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god tonight if you are born again already and you've been baptized in water because he that believeth and is baptized in water shall 
be saved. And then, uh, now that you are sure of your salvation, you are sure of your sonship in the kingdom of God, the intercession the Lord is making for you, which you have to agree with, is the intercession for the saints, for sanctification, for holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Sanctification is the will of God. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Verse 34. In verse 34, who is, who is he that condemned it is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also, look at that, who also maketh intercession for us. Now, he was in heaven, because when, we, when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he was on the earth and he made intercession for us when he was on earth. Now he is in heaven. He's at the right hand of God and he maketh intercession for us. He makes intercession for sinners tonight as you join that intercession, you'll be saved. Amen. Amen. He makes intercession for the seed. And tonight, as you link your faith with that intercession of Christ, whatever your sickness, however long the sickness has been there, because he maketh intercession for the seed, tonight you are healed in Jesus' name. He maketh intercession for the saints, and as I join your faith to that intercession of Christ, tonight it will sanctify you it will purify you it will make you holy and give you that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord how does it happen that the intercession of Christ becomes efficacious for you and becomes a reality in your life I say chapter 55 I'm reading from verse 6. I say, chapter 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You, you want salvation? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You want your sickness to be healed? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You want the attack, the affliction, the oppression of the devil to be cleared away from your life? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You want your soul sanctified, purified, made righteous, living in practical holiness of life. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way and your righteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. Mercy comes to you tonight. I said mercy comes to you tonight. Salvation by the mercy of God. Healing by the mercy of God. Deliverance by the mercy of God. The joy of heaven and the joy of salvation in your heart tonight because of the mercy of God. Say, it will have mercy on me tonight. Say it aloud. Say it as, you as if you believe. It will have mercy upon you tonight in Jesus' name. And let him return unto our God, for he will abundantly pardon. We're coming to number three. Number three is a powerful intervention for individuals with impossibility impossibility uh, when somebody has um, a kind of habit a kind of character that he himself does not like and he fights against it and he struggles against it the anger 
has got him into trouble more times than he can bear. And he wants that anger totally removed. And he tries, and he tries, and he tries. And he's always getting into anger and into problem. When somebody has animosity, and that animosity hatred has taken in good things away from him more times than he thought. He wants to be free from that animosity and yet is not able to be free now that's an impossibility in his life somebody has affliction and that affliction has drained the family pause it's gone here gone there looking for solution and no solution has come he has fasted he has prayed he has gone to pray for me, prophets. He has gone everywhere, and yet that affliction continues. That is an impossibility. When somebody is trying to raise up a business, and he has tried and tried, and he has put his whole life saving into it, but he's always going back to square one. And there is nothing he can show for all the things he has invested that becomes an impossibility. And when somebody has family problem, and that family problem is going to counsel us, is gone here and there, and the family problem continues and is taking everything away from him. That is an impossibility. Whatever impossibility you have, there's divine power powerful intervention tonight. He will intervene for you. He will come unto you. He will remove everything you have as an impossibility in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 19 and I'm reading from verse 25. Matthew chapter 19 Reading from verse 25, when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed and surprised, saying, who then can be saved? When there's a blockage in your way, you've tried to be saved, you thought you were saved, but lo and behold, the evidence of salvation, a change of life has not been there. And then you say, can I be saved ever? It will save you tonight. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible to convert the wicked man with men this is impossible to set free to deliver that afflicted man from his affliction with men this is impossible to transform the sinful soul to become a saved soul with men this is impossible and to change that terrible man that terrible woman and that fellow that goes around and is a terror to everyone is a terror to those who are older than him is a terror to he is a age mate is a terror to the people who are under him it says with men this is impossible because the terrorizing nature is in him but with God all things are possible you did say amen to that one that man lunatic that man demon possessed that will cut himself I will go to the tomb and people have tried to bind him with chains but he could not be bound because that affliction, that demon possession was impossible for men to set him free. But with God, 
all things are possible. The day he met Jesus, like you are going to meet Jesus tonight. Those chains were broken. The demons were cast out. And the legions were so terrified, they got out of him and he received the presence of mind, peace of mind, and his life was never the same again. Impossibilities are going to become possible tonight. Salvation for you. Salvation for you. Sanctification for believers. And relief. Deliverance for those who are oppressed and tormented. But with God, all things are possible. We're looking at Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. We're reading from verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe all things tonight, are possible to him that believeth. I believe. I believe. I believe. Now, you turn your eyes to your inner life. Be sincere with yourself. All those things you found impossible in your personal life. All those things you found impossible in your private life. All those things you found impossible in your family life. All things you found impossible in your health. All those things you found impossible, you couldn't extricate yourself and take yourself out of the hand of the evildoers. You found them impossible tonight. Tonight, they are possible in Jesus' name. Jesus said unto him, and as he said unto him, remember, it's an impartial intercessor. What he said unto him, he's saying unto you, if thou canst believe tonight, all things are possible to him that believeth. It will be done in my life. In your life, it will be done in Jesus' name. Tonight, possibilities have come to you. The power of heaven that makes impossibilities possible is coming in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Are you ready for him? I said, are you ready for him? You want to meet your intercessor? He's been praying for you for a long time. And now, what he's been praying for you for, your forgiveness is going to come to reality now. Your freedom is going to come to reality now. Your salvation is going to come to reality now. The intercessor is coming to you tonight to intervene in every area of your life. And you will be saved tonight. Say, I will be saved tonight. Say it well. Say it like you believe it. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to take away all that punishment of your sin, the pressure. Of your sin, the pollution of your sin. He wants to take away the agony you have concerning your sinful life. He wants to forgive you. He wants to give you salvation. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved tonight. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want that salvation of the Lord that He Himself has been praying for, interceding for you. Now you want the reality of that salvation, a transformation in your life, a change in your life, the forgiveness of your sin. Wherever you are, raise up that hand. 
let Jesus see you there that you want the forgiveness the salvation the freedom the redemption that you have been praying for that you will have raise up that hand and say Lord here am I you have been interceding for me praying for me that I will be saved I will be forgiven raise up that hand if you are raising up your hand you will stand up God bless you there thank you God bless you heaven sees you there you are raising up your hand you want that impossibility of conquering sin you want that impossibility to become possible raise up that hand and stand up as you are standing up whisper to the Lord there pray unto the Lord there Lord I know I'm a sinner my sin injures heaven injures my neighbor injures people around me I am injurious my character my behavior my lifestyle injures my neighbors and I do not love them as myself. I don't consider them. I don't consider their happiness or their joy. My life is injurious. Lord, forgive me. Lord, change my life. Lord, transform my life. I tried to turn over a new leaf by myself. I couldn't make it. Now, Christ, Savior, Lord, Intercessor, do it for me. Tell him, tell him. He will do it. He will forgive you. He will save you. And there will be peace in your heart. There will be the joy of salvation in your life. Amen. I'm praying with you now. Keep your hand up as you are standing up. Father, in Jesus' name, all these, my brothers and sisters, they have come to you. Here at the Alpha location, there on online. Lord, I pray according to your intercession for every sinner, forgive them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you will turn their lives around right now. I pray all the wastage in their lives. I pray, Lord, you'll bring a worthy life unto them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, your forgiveness come to them right now. The imputation of your righteousness come to them now in Jesus' name. And the impartation of your righteousness come to everyone now in Jesus' name. Lord, we believe in you. They believe in Christ. And I pray that the salvation that follows faith in Christ will come to everyone right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. Our counselors are there. And the counselors will interact with you and will have, you know, the details they are asking so that we can follow up with you that their salvation will abide in Jesus' name. You didn't say amen to that one. And then believers who are there, remember, he made intercession for your sanctification. While we're doing this now, just bow your head and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I know without holiness no man shall see the Lord. 
and you have made intercession for my sanctification and holiness sanctify me purify me while we're doing all this then uh, as you are praying they will answer your prayer and sanctify you in jesus name and then after we finish this i'll be coming back to pray for the sick because he's also making intercession for the sick we're called on our officiating uh, overseer tonight uh, to help us with this counseling session you will see a link there your name be stable and well the people in time don't forget and anxieties amen what Jesus prayed for, you receive right now. His intercession will always be effective. He prayed for the sick and is praying for you right now. That sickness will vanish away. That infirmity will vanish away. Whatever you have found impossible in the area of your healing, tonight it is possible. And so, identify that sickness and lay